Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video. This time I want to talk to you about an accessory that can be very interesting for wildlife photographers. I had a chance to use it while reviewing the recent 300mm f4 Pro by Olympus. It is called the E1 dot sight. It generates a dot star illuminated reticle that helps you frame subjects that are far away. The reticle is projected on a semi-transparent panel via a red LED light. What is important to say is that the E1 is compatible with any camera that has a hot shoe mount on top. I used it on the OMD M1 and Panasonic GX8, but you can also mount it on a DSLR. The only thing to take into account is that a large lens with a large hood could get into the way of the dot side with some camera and lens combinations. The E1 is small and light and made of robust plastic. It is also dust and splash proof. I use it in light rain without any fear of damaging it. It is powered by a coin type battery. Before starting to take pictures, the E1 needs to be configured and that can require a little bit of patience. The most comfortable way to do this is to position your gear on a tripod. First, you attach it to the top of your camera. There is a lock mechanism to secure it. You activate it by releasing the open switch. On the side, there is a dial to turn the light on and to adjust the brightness of the red dot. Then you can use the two dials on the rear to move the red reticle horizontally and vertically. The goal is to have it at the center, but that center point must correspond to the center of your image. The easiest way to do this is to find a distant but clear element in your frame that you can easily spot with your naked eye. Keep the live view activated on the LCD screen and adjust your camera's position until you see that reference point in the middle of the LCD screen. Now look at the EE1 and move the red dot until it is on the same reference point as the center of your composition. It is important that you remain in the same position while performing this operation. Now everything you point the dot side at should appear at the center of your image. So the setup process is related to the focal length you are using. For example, if you set everything for a 100mm like this lens, and then you change your lens with a 300mm, it is likely that you have to reconfigure everything. This accessory makes sense to use with very long telephoto lenses. If you plan to use more than one lens, the best thing to do is to configure the E1 with the longest telephoto lens you have. If you are using a zoom lens, it's this better to start at the longest focal length. The advantage of using the E1 is that you can keep your camera further away from your eyes and keep track of what is going on around your subject. It is up to you to find the right distance and the position you are more comfortable with. I find it helpful to attach the camera to a strap and keep the strap around my chest and shoulders so that I don't extend my arms too much. So the question of course is, does it really help? Well, I find that overall it works well, but there are a few aspects that you need to be aware of. First, you won't be able to check your composition precisely because your eyes are looking at the E1, not the LCD screen or the EVF. The goal is to keep the red dot on your subject so that it stays at the center of the frame, but in real life it takes some practice to track your subjects efficiently. If you are not precise, your subject may not stay in the center of your image or may even be slightly cut off. I find the E1 useful with extreme focal lengths like the Olympus 300mm and the MC14 teleconverter. The angle of view is very narrow and shooting with a larger view of your scene is a big advantage. The dials of the E1 can move inadvertently when performing various operations. This is why I keep the live view on the LCD to check the composition from time to time and make sure that the dot side still gives accurate results. The autofocus settings on the camera are also very important. Forget using the singular f point because it will require your composition to be too precise. On the M1 I use the 9 target group area and the all target group depending on the situation. With the GX8 I set a custom area with 9 areas or more. 
Another important thing is to use focus priority and not release priority. Since you are looking at the LCD or EVF, you never know if the camera is focusing correctly. With focus priority enabled, the camera won't take the shot until the autofocus locks, so you know what is happening. If you choose release priority, you will take more shots, but you won't have any clue at all about how the camera is focusing. Overall, I find the A1 to be a very interesting accessory, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with world photography. It can be very difficult to frame a fast-moving subject with a long telephoto lens if you don't have a lot of experience. With the E1, you can take pictures while maintaining your distance from the camera and keeping an eye on what's happening around your frame. This is also important to observe how birds behave in the air, how they change direction and where they go. I think that the E1 can either help you enhancing your tracking abilities, which means that one day you won't need it anymore, or it can become a must-have companion for your wildlife photography. It isn't cheap, it is more than $100, but I think it can be a worth investment if you're really keen on wildlife photography. So, as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask on this very YouTube video. You can also visit our full review on mirrorlesson.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.